Hey gang, Ted Gravelin with the TedCast for today. Uh, the TedCasts are moving to YouTube because I've been people want to find them there. I've moved a couple dozen of them over there. I'm still looking for other ones as I find them. I'm slowly migrating them in there too because uh, I've done hundreds of these over the years and I just don't have, I, the files are scattered everywhere. I don't have one particular single place where they are because that was my mistake when I first started doing it to not keep them all in one place. Um, if you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Um, also hit the like button, make comments. I like comments. Um, if you're watching on a platform that's not YouTube, like Facebook groups or something, then go ahead, go to YouTube, find me, uh, search Ted Gravelin, find the channel, subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook or something, I also like likes and comments on those too, because it helps me know what uh, what people are thinking about, and maybe it helps someone else learn something. So today's TedCast is going to be a doozy. This is the one that causes more companies to succeed or fail more than anything else that I've ever worked with anyone. Um, and it really comes down to this. The question, what's holding you back? And it really is an important question because if we think about it, there's probably 50,000 or so companies in North America. That number is hard to target, hard to know for sure, but it's, let's use that as a number. There's probably maybe 30,000 of those companies who will never get above one or two trucks and what's different about those guys versus the folks who grow and thrive a little bit better? Well, it really comes down to um, really your belief system of what you're doing. And I'm going to go through belief matrix here. So basically, we start with your beliefs and take ac the actions you take from those beliefs and then the experiences you have from those actions. And then it gives you some new thoughts, which may give you some new beliefs. And then it kind of goes around in a vicious circle. So let's talk about how that plays out in the real world, okay? Let's use a common thought process that we hear all the time from a lot of companies who are struggling. Um, and they'll say something like, I'm going to pick one single belief, one single thought process, action, and all that. Um, and it's something like, I think all the customer is just looking for the cheapest bid. So if you believe that, if that's what you believe, then you are going to take actions based on that, meaning you're going to keep your prices really low because you think people are looking for the cheapest bid. So you take an action. You keep your prices really low. And then you go out in the field and you get experience. Maybe the experience is, oh, this other guy was $10 cheaper and they bought it from him. Maybe the experience is, I was, I was inexpensive and someone bought from me. For whatever reason, you find experiences that might reinforce that belief. It gives you a new thought. And the thought can be something along the lines of, see, I told you so, I was right. And that gives you a belief, or it reinforces your belief. Now, how do you break the cycle if it's a belief and an action cycle and experience and thought that's not helpful for you? So we probably can agree that the thriving companies don't believe that. They don't believe that the people just buy the cheapest thing all the time. Um, the most successful companies actually believe quite the opposite. They believe, hey, look, the good customers will pay whatever it takes. That's a different belief system. So how do you get in here and break the cycle? Well, from a coaching perspective, what we do is the easiest thing for me to do is jump into the action area. I can say, do this new thing and get an experience from that. I can say, for example, try something super radical. Raise your prices X percent. Uh, for the next 10 days and see what happens. Um, now, we don't actually do it that way. We actually go through some mathematical models because um, when I'm having my clients do some of the exercises we have them do, um, I don't do that for them. I have to make them do it because I have to build new beliefs for them. For example, I need to have them take their costs with their own pencil and paper, work out what their real numbers need to be, and say, okay, I didn't lie to you. This is your real numbers. I'm hopefully trying to give, give some new beliefs. Excuse me that will lead to some new actions. New actions would be sell at a higher price. See what happens to that. Holy cow, they didn't say no. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Um, maybe I can have a belief that they aren't selling, buying from the cheapest thing. So this is the matrix, and we go over this as humans over and over and over again. This is how we change where we are, because we're back to the first question. What's holding you back? What's holding you back is, you know, the definition of insanity. Keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Obviously, you have to do something different to make a different result. So we got to get into this matrix and figure out where you're going to jump in. And you can jump into any places in there. If you have a new thought, build a new belief, it works for you. 
If you have, and the easiest thing again from a coaching perspective is to ask you to take a new action. Now, here's where some clients are more successful than others. And this is a dirty little secret that most coaches won't tell you. Um, the difference is I've got clients who when I say do this thing, they go, no problem, I'll do it. I'm, I'm off, I'm on it. And other people, they want to kind of argue it in their own mind. And sometimes that means arguing with me. And it's fine, I can take it. But when I ask them to do something, they're like, I don't want to do it that way. And then eventually when they finally do get around to trying it that way, then I can change their belief and change the cycle. Um, so sometimes it's easier and sometimes it's not. Um, again, the best people I work with are folks who are like, I'm fed up with being held back. I'm ready to do whatever somebody that knows what they're talking about says to do. I'll jump, I'll do the action, I'll get the experience, I'll change my thoughts. I'm going to think about this every day and we're going to have, we're going to build new beliefs. Hey, people don't buy the cheapest thing anymore. Um, my numbers are screwed up. Oh, I don't need to hire this kind of guy. I need to hire that kind of guy. I do need a training program. I do need, bottom line is whatever's going on in your business. Those are the details, but this is the real big deal. So we come back around to this. There are only three things you can do to grow a business and it doesn't matter what kind of business it is. Number one, you can charge more. Number two, you can sell more often. And number three, you can go find more customers and more clients. Um, I got so many people who are screwing or skipping around in this. The easiest one to do is to charge more, meaning you'll get a result faster. It doesn't mean it's easy. I should say simple. The simplest thing to do is to charge more. This is pretty simple. Make a new price book, charge more, you'll make more money. Um, if you charge more to 10 customers, and let's just say your cost, your uh, prices went up 40% because somebody, you're severely underpriced. If you had 80% of your customers paying 40% more, that's a lot of money. And then the 20% who are going to say no thank you and not do business with you anymore, you're still farther ahead. Okay, It just is. So charging more is um, one way to do it. Sell more often to the customers you have. Um, again, find ways to do that. That could be in our business. The most immediate thing that comes to mind is get a service agreement plan together so that you are in front of your customers who already like you more often. The more often you're in front of them, the more often they'll buy from you. If you wait for them to call you every five to six, eight years when something breaks, you're going to be a long time growing a business waiting for someone to do business with you the second time. So you got to get them to do business with you more often. And the thing and the third one is to find more clients. That's where we get into marketing. And here's the one I've been hearing for so many years. Oh my gosh, my business is slow. I need more customers. It's like, well, do you really? How many customers do you have? Let's, let's look at what your lead flow actually is and what it should be. How many service calls are you running that didn't turn into a replacement lead? How many replacement leads did you get that didn't turn into a sale because you had a belief something sent a system over here that wasn't allowing you to help that customer uh, get sit, buy a system. I mean, you might've had a belief system that says, I don't sell any systems unless the customer asks me. Well, the customers generally don't do that. So, you know, I've talked to people who they're running hundreds of service calls per month and they're selling three and four systems per month. And statistically, it's not possible to run a couple of hundred service calls and only have three or four bad systems. It's not statistically possible. Um, and so there's, the only reason why that's happening is because they got something going on in their belief systems. And they're, what those guys are doing is they're, I just need more customers. Man, that is expensive. It's the most expensive thing to do. It's the hardest one to do. It takes the longest to accomplish. And frankly, you need to be doing all three of these, but I've listed them in this order because this is the order that has the most impact the fastest. So um, this is the first thing we do with looking at a company is let's look at your numbers, make sure they're right, make sure you have a sales process in place so you can sell at the new numbers, and then make sure we can do marketing. That's what we do in those in, with most companies. And it's what's holding you back is mostly the owner's attitude stuck in the matrix here. That's what it is. And hopefully you're, you're enlightened enough to see it. And the fact is it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a small thing. It's a belief like, well, we, ha we, we don't want to do 24 hour service or we do want to do 24 hour service or whatever the little thing is that could cause your business to grow. You have to be able to say, what's my belief about that? Is this a belief that's good for me? Or is it one that's holding me back? Is the action I take helping me or hurting me? Am I actually taking action on this belief? Or like, because you know, here's the other thing, you can have a disconnect. I can have a belief that, well, you know, I, I think customers do want to 
uh, buy more expensive things, using our example. But the action I'm taking is I'm still keeping my prices low. Well, that's not in con incongruency with the, your belief. Your belief is they don't want to buy cheap stuff, but you still show them cheap stuff. And then, of course, you get the experience. Yeah, see, told you so. They don't want to buy the expensive stuff. And it can be very subconscious. It can be very much like... You know, um, you're not even thinking that that's what's going on, but it's buried down in when you're not thinking about it, your belief is, I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. I'm not, uh, I'm not what they're looking for. You know, those big companies have something I don't have. They don't, okay? Well, they do. They have a belief system you don't have. That's what it is. So really, it comes around to those things. The fastest thing to do for me as a coach is to jump into this matrix, give you new actions to take, give you new experiences. I do teach people in a very first module, a very first week, how to do some thought process changes. Um, how do you manifest that? How do you say, you know what? Um, how do I on purpose make sure that my thoughts are going to create new empowering beliefs? And it's an important part and most people never do it. And it's not like, I mean, you could say it's meditating, but it's not meditating. But there have been books written on it, like Think and Grow Rich. The, it's not enough to say, oh, I'm thinking of a million dollars, I have a million dollars. It doesn't work that way, not directly, but it do, you do get what you focus on. So if you're focusing on, hey, I'm going to get a belief system of more customers, I'm going to get a belief system of more money per customer, uh, so I'm going to get a belief system, I'm going to serve customers so well that they're willing to pay me the top dollar in my marketplace, all of those things make a difference. So um, I, I know we're kind of getting off in the weeds with that, but ultimately the real thing is there's something holding you back. It's probably here. And there's only three things you can do about it. In the end, what my job is, is to give people the actions to take, give them the processes to make it move forward to the next smooth thing, and then let them implement that. Unfortunately, Nobody can lift the weights for you. You have to do that if you want to get in shape. So anyway, there's the TEDcast for today. If you want to talk about it, let me know. Make a comment below. Message me on Facebook. Send me a, a text. Um, look me up at tedgravelin.com forward slash booking. We'll pick a time. We can talk. And if you do that, we'll talk soon.